Running back Jarek McKinnon is officially signing back with the Chiefs as of today, which was initially reported yesterday, but made official today. And then it was also announced that the Chiefs are declining the fifth year option of Clyde Edwards E. So let's talk about it. But first, how about those? All right, a couple quick announcements for you all, both running back related. First, I made a video yesterday saying that Jarek McKinnon would re-sign with the Chiefs today and it officially happened per a report from Field Yates, who said the Chiefs have officially re-signed running back Jarek McKinnon today per source. McKinnon played an integral role for the Super Bowl champs last year, leading the team with nine TD catches and was named a team captain during the playoffs. And then it was officially, officially made official when the Chiefs Twitter page themselves shared the announcement. So it's a done deal. And I would imagine this is a one year contract worth somewhere around a million dollars, maybe a bit more 1.2, 1.5, or maybe they even up it a little bit more with incentives. Like if McKinnon stays healthy all year and contributes a certain amount of production, he'll get even more. I mean, he's worth a lot. So we'll see what the contract ends up being. As of when I'm recording this video, there are no contract details. I mean, all of his previous one year deals that he's done over the past few years has been around a million dollars, give or take a hundred thousand here or there. So that's just the best guess, um, but he's worth it for sure. This is a great thing for the running back room to have the soon to be 31 year old veteran. He literally turns 31 tomorrow, May 3rd, back in Kansas City for another season. And then just prior to the McKinnon officially re-signing with the Chiefs announcement. It was officially announced that the Chiefs will be declining the fifth-year option of Clyde edwards Elaire, which was first reported by Matt Derrick of Chiefs Digest, and that is a surprise to absolutely nobody. We all knew that the Chiefs were not going to pick up the fifth-year option for CEH, mainly because his production thus far has no way, shape, or form been worth the cost of what the fifth year is going to be. Matt Derrick shares a bit more in detail about it all, saying the deadline for teams to pick up the fifth year option for first round choices in the 2020 NFL draft expires at 3 p.m. Central Time today. If the Chiefs exercised the option, Edwards Elaire would have received a salary of approximately five. $0.46 million for the 2024 season. $5.46 million for CEH next year? Hell, Hell nah. No. Anyway, Derek continues saying, the fourth year running back remains under contract with the club for the upcoming campaign. Edwards Elaire is slated to count $3.44 million toward the salary cap in 2023, including a base salary of $1.986 million. And I have a feeling even that $3.44 million hurts the souls of every higher up in Kansas City. And that is no disrespect to Clyde. Injuries have hampered his production year after year, and it just has not panned out for him so far in KC. However, Brett Veach said he's been working hard this offseason and hopes that he has a great season this year and stays healthy. And so do I. If he does indeed walk in free agency next year, I hope he gets a favorable deal from another team. And I wish him the best. The question now is, though, will CEH even remain on the roster this season? Something he could be packaged in a trade or traded for some late round pick before the trade deadline. But I have no real solid answer. I think the weirdest thing of it all is that CEH chose to miss the Super Bowl parade for a fashion show in New York. His first Super Bowl parade and he chose to miss it. Huh? Some said right then and there that it's over for CEH. It's over for you. And he would be gone, not playing any of this season. And I guess my question to you all is, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think CEH will play this season in some sort of a Ronald Jones backup type of a role, you know, going in when Pacheco needs a breather or in case of emergency due to injury? Or do you think the Chiefs will end up trading him this offseason after all? Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I mean, it would make sense to me if CEH stayed just as valuable back up in case of injury is like the biggest reason he's been here for years. He knows the playbook. He knows the system. So that's why I could see them keeping him, but I wouldn't rule out a trade of some sort. You're not going to get too much out of him, but maybe they package him up and say, oh, and you can have CEH if you want, but time will tell there. Now, the funny part about these two announcements to me is that Brett Veach was asked about both of these things yesterday during his post-draft presser and regarding McKinnon. He said, I wouldn't be surprised if something happens with him soon. Then literally five minutes after his presser, it was announced by James Palmer that McKinnon would be returning to KC for another year. And then when asked about CEH's fifth year option, he said it was something they'd be looking at soon as well. And boom, no fifth year option for CEH. You know something? No you. I guess Veach just didn't want to break any news in his presser because we all know that he knew the answer to both of these questions. Anyway, with the return of Jarek McKinnon being stamped 
as 100% official. The running back room now currently looks as follows. You have Clyde edwards Lair, Jarek McKinnon, Isaiah Pacheco, LaMichael P. Ryan, and then the newly signed UDFA Daenerik Prince. Pretty sure that's everybody. They might have had another running back or fullback invited to minicamp, but as of right now, that is who is on the roster. And this is why I think Daenerik Prince is one of the few UDFAs the Chiefs signed that could actually make the roster. If the Chiefs, for whatever reason, opted for four running backs instead of a fullback or some other different combination on the offense, Prince could find himself as RB4 on the team and maybe even work his way up a tad bit higher. But it's honestly too early to tell. It will definitely be interesting to see how it all plays out and be sure of this i will keep you all informed every step of the way so until next time let's go let's freaking go how about those Jeez.